In the previous video, we created this HTML form, which allows a user to enter in a name, phone number, email address, wage, and class year for a tutor in a hypothetical tutoring center database. In this video, we want to build on this form by creating a PHP script that processes the information submitted by the user and sends it to a database. The database we'll be using is a MySQL database. And the tables in it are course, student, and tutor. And tutoring session are the, the major entities. Student class and tutor class are linking tables for many-to-many -many relationships between student and course and tutor and course, respectively. And this is supposed to add, this form is supposed to add a new entry to the tutor table. So if we look at the columns in the tutor table, we see the last name should have a maximum of 40 characters. The first name should have a maximum of 25 characters. We can implement this into the uh, form right here. We can say max length is 25 for first name. Max length is 40 for last name. We have our phone number, email address, hourly wage. The tutor ID will be automatically assigned by the database, so we don't have to worry about that. And the values that we put into our class year uh, drop-down box are exactly the ones in the enum, except we need a capital O here. And then finally, we'll default to an active status for our new tutor. So this information looks like it's ready to be put into the database. If we're going to submit it via a form, we need some kind of server-side language to actually interface with the database, and we're going to use PHP. Now, the HTML, especially the PHP file, should be in your um, server home directory, which in Linux is var slash www slash HTML. So I've already moved my files to the home folder for my server and if you haven't done that yet you should do so now pause the video go move them into your home folder for the server i'll put the proper paths for each of the three major operating systems linux mac and windows in the description of this video but for me that's var www html because i'm using linux so now that these two files exist, the PHP file I haven't done anything with yet, I want to write it from scratch to process this HTML form. So I'll start with the begin and end HTML tags, and this is because I want to be able to display things to the user. I could just make a straight up PHP script file that does nothing, displays nothing in the browser, but I want to be able to show the user some error messages or some confirmation messages as we go forward. So I'm going to spit out an HTML file that will give this output to the user in the browser. Now the form method is post and the form action is to load new tutor.php. Well I called it add tutor so I'm going to, have to change the name of it now. Um, whatever your PHP file name is, that's what needs to go here in the action. So I'm calling it addTutor.php, that's what needs to go here. And I want to be able to grab each of the inputs from this form in the PHP script. So in order to start PHP, we type 
less than sign question mark PHP and the variables are going to get stored in an automatic variable that's created by the form submission that's called dollar sign underscore post that's an array that stores all of the form inputs so I can index into the array using the square brackets and this will work so that I can grab the first name by typing post and indexing into first name. I can grab the last name by looking at the post array and grabbing the last name variable or last name index. Tutor phone, I'm looking at the name attribute of each of my inputs. So tutor phone is the next one. Tutor phone. Tutor email is the next. Wage and the last question is about class year. Now right now the code that I've written I'm ending the PHP tag here. The code that I've written is just indexing into the post array and doing absolutely nothing with that information. If I want to be able to grab the values, I can store them into their own um, variables. For example, I could create a variable called first name, which is going to grab first name from the post array. I could create a variable called last name that is going to grab the last name. I can create a variable called, maybe I'll just call it phone, that grabs the phone number from the form. I can create an email, wage, and class year variable. Now each of these variable names will refer to the output from the form that's been posted to this script. There's a lot of error handling that needs to happen here, but I'm going to for the moment assume that all the inputs are completely valid. That's a very bad assumption to make. You should not do this in real life, but for right now, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that the user has typed in valid information on the form for all of these, and I'm not going to worry about errors. We'll leave that for another video. So I want to write the SQL query that should insert this into the database. If I look at the database, I'm going to want to look at simultaneously. The SQL query should look like ins insert into tutor and then what do I have? I have first name, last name, phone number, email, wage, class year. These are the database column names. They need to match the actual column names in your actual database. This is your actual database table. It needs to match your actual database table name. So insert into tutor, into these columns, the values first name, last name, phone, email, wage, class year. Semicolon. 
if I can create this string and then submit it to the database, I will be in great shape. So, this whole query should be a string in PHP. That's how I'd like to store it. And anything that needs to be put in quotes in SQL, I need to put the quotes in here. So first name is a varkar, it needs to have single quotes around it. Same with last name. Phone is an integer that doesn't get quotes. Email is a string, it gets quotes. Oops. Wage is a decimal, it does not get quotes. Class year will go in with quotes. The values that are getting returned by class year are the values in my option tags in the, the HTML form, which are F, R, S, O, J, R, S, R, other, the things that are supposed to go into this enum. So this query should work if, it's a huge if, if the user entered valid things into the post. So this I might call dollar sign query to be the query that I want to submit. And now I need to add all the little database pieces. So the database connection, which I'll call con for connection, the function that connects connects MySQL to PHP is called MySQL I underscore connect to connect to that database. The first argument in this function is your server, which for us is localhost. If you're using a remote server, put your actual server here. Your username, which for me, I'm using the default setting, so I'm using root. That's very bad in production, but it's okay for us to use when we're testing on local servers. And then I gave myself a default password of Hearst123. And then finally, the fourth and last parameter is your database name, which my database is called tutoring, all lowercase. The connection to the database is here. I should check that it connects correctly. So if there's no connection, then I want to end while also printing my error message, which looks like this. And if the connection goes through, then I will not just terminate. I will call into the post variable and then build my query. And then I'd like to submit the query to the database. So how do I accomplish this? With the MySQL I underscore query function, which takes in as its first Variable or first parameter that the database connection, which we called con at the top, and then the query as its second parameter. Now, if there's an error, I should print that error. So if my SQL error for the connection. then I want to print that error. Now, if I make it through the connection statement with no error, and I define all these variables, submit my query, and get no error, 
then I should be able to send some sort of confirmation message. So maybe I'll echo out uh, a paragraph which says new tutor added to the database successfully. Let's save all of our changes. I have to save as root because I'm in a privileged folder. In our next video, we will test out this form and the PHP script, make sure it's working and communicating with the database properly. And then we'll actually get into error detection and making sure that the user has entered the correct information in the correct format.